Hey, everybody. How you doing? Good afternoon. Good. Sometimes there the games the way it unfolds with what's going on offensively and defensively where special teams aren't going to have as great of an impact potentially. Was last night one of those games, and, and how do you do? You just focus on the coverage units in that situation, or how do you kind of go from there? Yeah, it was one of those games where just a great football game. And I think just a normal a normal play, you know, just a normal punt is always potentially a big factor. And I thought our guys, you know, covering did a good job of turning the field over. You know, I don't know what our net was a couple of times, but it felt like we were running and, you know, competing and turning the field. Um, but the kickoff kickoff return was kind of negated just with the touchbacks. But it feels like every play, no matter if it's fourth and eight with two and a half, you know, five minutes left in the second quarter, is feels like a big play. So, um, but yeah, what a game. What a game. There was a punt from your end zone six where Anger, I want to see the, it probably wasn't a coincidence, but he directionally puts it towards CJ's side. Yep. And then the holding call and then minus five return, it'd be like a net of 70. Can you just kind of run through that and its significance for field position? Yeah, we worked on uh, backed up punts quite a bit where we're inside the five because it has a little bit of a bearing on protection. And, you know, we wanted to punt it to the right, and we wanted to put CJ over to there to the right. And we had a game plan for Brian how we wanted him to punt it, and Brian had a great game. I mean, he nailed it with the distance, direction, hang time. And he gave CJ a chance. Then the rest of the guys inside, it just felt like a good tidal wave of bodies coming downhill. And it feels good to watch the guys running because you can see it, but, but better than that, you can, like, feel it. A lot of times on the sideline, you can feel the speed and the, and the competitiveness. And... That one felt good, and we turned the field over pretty good. I think it was closer to the end of the second quarter on that one, which sometimes those moments, you know, to back the other offense up, especially when it's maybe later in the half of the game, gives them a little longer feel. That's that's our job. Yeah, Blaine and Cedric, you're trying to punch. How do you make the decision to say, this is for you, CD, this is for you, Cedric? Yeah, that's a good question. I actually talked to Coach McCarthy about that this morning. We kind of call Cedric our utility man on punt return where he can come inside and rush, hold up, go outside and block the gunners or return punts. CD, of course, is just to return punts. But to decide which one is the one who's actually returning punts, to be honest with you, sometimes I let them choose. I mean, they're, they're great buddies. They got great chemistry, and they kind of have a feel for each other. Who wants it? Um, you know, maybe CD's got a big load coming up on offense on this next series, so Seth will take it, or vice versa. So um, really, most of the time, I let those guys kind of buddy system it. And I feel really confident with whatever they want to do, to be honest with you. Hey, Philly went after it last night on the punt, and then you guys just handled the business there. Did you notice that at all with them? On one of their punt rushes? Yeah. Yeah, they came after one. Um, we did OK. There was a little bit of an error that uh, you know, we'll take care of on Thursday for sure. Did you go after their punts and they just kind of stopped you? Or was that, or did you did not do that this week? Yeah, I mean, we, we, we mixed it up pretty good. We, uh, I, think, I think most punts, there's an element of pressure, you know, whether it's bringing one or bringing eight, sometimes everything in between. So um, not to give away too much, I think every punt return has most of the time, some element of between one or eight coming. <laughs> Sorry to kind of stay on the fence with that one. They, they had a punt coming out of their end zone, and Cedric was your returner. He's right on midfield. Is that a situation where they made that call, or is there something about that situation? Sometimes you think, okay, that's a good place for CD to get it, or coming out of the end zone, and most teams like hang it up and just don't give your guy an opportunity. Yeah, the one out of the end zone, that was between said and CD. So that was a, a play call that we did not have said as the utility man in with like the six, seven, or eight guys inside. So between said and CD, they, I love how they actually choose kind of who's feeling it. Um, and that's what they went with, to be honest with you. I, I told said and CD, I said, hey, this is the play call. And um, you guys go back there, said, I don't need you inside. We're covered with the eight inside. And um, whoever's back there, this is the call and give it a run, man. It's kind of it's really cool to be able to have two guys that can do that because I haven't had much experience with a buddy system at punt returner, but I think it's I think it's a good tactical way to use two really good guys. Would you say a little more about anger? How how you feel? He's he had had a lot of punts, thank goodness, the first couple of weeks, but not just last night. How's he been performing overall? He's been outstanding. I mean, I go back ten years ago when he came out for the draft. I worked him out you know, pre-draft, and I've always had an eye on him, and I've always thought he's been just a really 
prolific punter with the operation is really good, his ability to put hang time on top of some good distance. And I think one of the best things he did yesterday was his ability to hit the ball directionally. I mean, he really fed our gunners to the direction that we asked him to punt it. Um, and we've been work, working really hard on the, the distance, which he's got, the hang time, which he's got, but now mac matching it with some direction. And I thought he had a fantastic game last night. Really, really proud of him. And he's really hard working. He's doing a really good job holding, too, which is something that punters got to be able to do. This is more maybe a philosophical question. Late in the game, you see it, the Green Bay-San Francisco game. Late in the game, you're kicking off. Do you ever, does it always just say touchback is always the operative way to go here or hang it up, bring it to the goal line, make them burn some clock and cover a yeah. kick? Yeah. That is a great question. And what's really interesting is um, that, was Saturday, that was Sunday night game, right? So we were, I was here in the facility Sunday night and watched the game. And I got home that night, and my wife was up, and I started talking to her. I said, did you see the end of the San Fran Green Bay? There was 37, 38 seconds left. And I think there are situations where you say, hey, they got a really good quarterback. You know, if you kick off the ball in play and you tackle them, let's just say the 25, equivalent of a touchback, you know, you burn off probably six or seven more seconds which could be the difference in the game. They had no timeouts. So there has been situations in my past where um, you got the lead. They got a really good quarterback. Time is very much of the essence. And so you put a ball in play to burn clock, back them up field position. Um, we had one a couple of years ago where we actually forced a fumble and ended the game. So there are situations, very <laughs> good observation by you, because when that game was happening in that situation, I said this would be an opportunity to to put it in play to, at worst, just burn some clock. How did CJ come out of the game health-wise? Or is the player really slow to get up? Yeah, he kind of got his hamstring on that kickoff. We got him back in for a gunner rep after that because we thought he was good. And then he could have gone back in. But I, th I think you noticed in the fourth quarter, we kept him out. And a lot of that had to do with kind of where the game was at. So we got Nashawn Wright in there. We got um, Izzy Mukawamu in there. So we got some young guys, some reps, just because we wanted to just be smart. He's going to be fine. But we just felt like, let's not push it, because there was actually a lot of running in the game. We kicked off seven times. Even though there's touchbacks, it's still a lot of running. We punted four. We had six punt returns. So there was, there was a lot of running for those guys. And the hamstrings were starting to be felt by a lot of the, the high-speed runners. So short week, and they'll be pros, and they'll be ready to go on Sunday. What dictated that being such a t touchback heavy game for you guys? Um, just letting Greg swing, to be honest with you. I think last week, keeping him in just in a just a normal, just swing at a rhythm helped him with the field goals. And um, I kind of evaluated myself, to be honest with you. When I had him pull some of the kickoffs back to maybe play some and put some balls in play, I felt maybe that got him out of rhythm a little bit. I could be way overthinking it. But going into the Charger game, I said, let's just let him swing at it. Don't tell him to put it too deep on the two-yard line, directional. Um, and he kicked it good against the Chargers. I said, let's stay with the same you know, mindset, whether it has anything to do with anything or not. Just let him swing at it. And he hit him good, so we just let him hit it good. All right, thanks, guys. Thank All right, thanks. Thanks. thanks.